Hi, it's Joe here from Joe's Country Junction. I am coming to you from my sewing room. You can see I've got my Christmas presents wrapped. And um, if you were to a video or if you watched some, a video I did before, you will probably remember I had my um, upper cabinet here full of quilts. Well, I've completely redone my sewing room since then and I'm super excited about it and I'm really happy about the changes that I made. They were all for the better. And if you want to check that out, I have a sewing room video that I did a tour of my redone sewing room. It is already looking a little more lived in. Um, I have some projects that I'm working out out on the counter and I've got um, things sitting by the ironing board. So it's not quite as neat as it was when I filmed the video, but it is looking pretty good and I'm really quite happy about the progress that I made with it and uh, it's been just a joy to be working in my sewing room. As far as the family goes, we're all doing pretty good. Um, of course, there's always COVID to deal with. I have a cold right now, and um, it was so hard because everybody's like, oh, mom, are you sure you're not sick? Mom, are you sure you're not sick? I did go in and have a COVID test, but no, I don't have COVID. I just have a regular old-fashioned cold that's kind of a lingerer. Um, I don't, I'm one of those people that don't get a cold very often, but when I do, it kind of lingers. So. I'm on my lingering cold and um, that's okay. We'll get over that and I'm just thankful it's not COVID. Um, my two nurses that are that are working, um, one I have that's working in the ICU, she's dealing with a lot of COVID. Um, my other daughter's pregnant with twins and she's due in May and she's not allowed to work with COVID patients anymore being that she's pregnant. Um, other than that, um, I think everybody's pretty good. We're just kind of, we didn't do Thanksgiving like normal. Um, and we don't really do a lot for Christmas, so it'll just be a normal Christmas for us, I guess. But let's get on to some stitching. After all, that's what I'm here for, right? So this is my finish. What do you think? Um, this is... Newcastle Bouquet by Teresa Kogut. I stitched it on 40 count vintage country mocha. The original called for fabric was weak straw. And I think I had some old weeks and I don't think that it um, was the thing for me because I had just terrible, terrible issues and I couldn't get everything to meet up and I just was not happy with it at all. So after I went all around it the first time and did the main weave of the of the outer border to kind of set the border, I couldn't get it to match. I was off by like four stitches, that, and that's just terrible. And I think it really had more to do with the linen than it had to do with me because I did this border and I matched it up right away. I'm not a fast stitcher. I... um am often not having a lot of times in the evenings, maybe an hour a night. Um, occasionally I get in two hours a night. So it takes me a long time to finish something. And some nights I don't even get stitched at all because I'm busy writing blog posts or doing other things like that. And so I end up with not a lot of time to stitch. So I started this the end of July and I finished about Halloween time. And I am really loving it. Um, Everything um, as far as threads is called for, except for the white in these flowers right here. What I had wasn't, what was called for wasn't showing up very well. And so I switched it out to something else that I thought showed up. And they don't show up like brightly, but I think that's the intent of the design is that they're just supposed to be um, kind of like background flowers, not necessarily the shining light of the project. This is to date the biggest project I've ever finished and I'm really excited about it. I love stitching on Vintage Country Mocha. I think if um, I stitch anything for a little while, I'm gonna stick with that because I had such success with that. I don't like to be a snob to other things, but right now I know this works for me. Um, I've heard so many good things about other linens, so I do wanna try them down the road but I just do not want to have that terrible experience I had with that weak straw. But I am so loving this. Um, I'm kind of a cheapskate, so I'm trying to decide what I should do with it. 
because I'd really love to send it off to a framer framer, but I don't know if I want to afford that. So we'll just, we'll just see what happens. And again, that was Teresa Kogut's um, Newcastle bouquet pattern that came out uh, at Spring Market. I um, decided then, I thought I was gonna go on and I was gonna do this project, um, another Teresa Kogut project. And this one is Faith, Hope, Peace, Love. I like this, but I didn't want to stitch it on something quite so dark. So I got, I think this is, here I have the tag here. This is Legacy from um, Picture This Plus. I didn't iron this one because I was just going to talk about it for a minute. So I put a few stitches into it right here, and then I ran into a problem. I can't see the white that is supposed to be in these flowers that are right along here. And so I was very, very frustrated with that because I felt like, well, I didn't want to do all that stitching and not see it. I know people do that and they, you know, have ghost alphabets and things like that, but I didn't want to go through all that work of making the borders come together and not be able to see it. So I got frustrated and I put that aside. If I stitch a big sampler, I've kind of figured out it takes me at least three months to do it. And that's if I stitch mostly on that sampler because I don't stitch a lot at night and I don't have a lot of time to stitch, but I really enjoy stitching. So I don't want to, if I pick a project, I want to pick something that I really like and can complete. Well, then I ended up starting um, a different Teresa Kogut. Yes, I'm on a Teresa Kogut kick. Um, and this is um, Heaven and Nature. It's more Christmassy, but it's not so Christmassy. I know it says let heaven and nature sing, but I don't know that that really applies only to Christmas. And it does have these two trees here, but other than that, everything else isn't super Christmassy. I mean, there's some, a couple squirrels here. Squirrels aren't Christmassy to me. Um, oh, there's a raccoon here. That's not Christmassy. So I think if I, do, if I did stitch this, I would try to get it done and... Um, have it up all year. I don't think that I would limit it to Christmas only. So I was really excited about stitching that. So then I got going and I then I didn't know if I wanted to stitch it because I was starting this right after Halloween. I knew I wouldn't get it stitched by Christmas because as Christmas gets busier, you know, we all get busier and we don't have as much stitching time. So <clears throat> I decided, well, I'll just try it anyway because I could stitch along and then as I got to Christmas, I'll just put it aside, pick it up next fall, finish it for Christmas then. Sounds like a good plan, right? Well, <clears throat> I got stitching and I decided that I would, this is how far I am. I decided that I would first stitch the outer, the baseline of the border. And I went around and went around and I was two stitches off. Nope. Yep, I was two stitches off. And I went and I found one spot and I went back ripped. I think I ripped from, oh, here to here. Not very far at all. And because when I turned the corner, I miscounted. And so I went back and was stitching it together. And then right along down here, I think there's supposed to be six stitches in the bump out. And right here in this one, there's only five stitches in the bump out. And I have gone through and counted and counted and counted and counted and counted and counted, and I cannot find where that stitch is off. So then I finally decided, if I don't tell anyone, no one's going to know that, that that one stitch is off because the border isn't so particular that you can tell. Because through here, if this was one stitch one way or the other, no one would be able to tell. So I decided I was just going to start stitching. So I started stitching and then I ended up with the same problem I had before. I have something, a thread that doesn't show up on my linen. So I could not figure out a skin tone for this angel up here in the corner. And so I went and put the project aside and I decided when my daughter Kelly came home, Kelly and I could figure out a color because Kelly's really good at helping me do things like that. So then, I decided that I would start in and do a, a few of the other project things that I had. And I, instead of going to cross stitching, I went to a couple projects that I've had going for a long time and I went to some wool applique I had. 
and this is um, a really cool pattern. It's the She Seeketh Wool and Flax and Worketh Willingly with Her Hands. And it's from Proverbs 31, 13. And this is from Threads That Bind. It's called A Gentle Life. It has, um, this is a really old pattern. I probably bought it 10 years ago. Well, I had the <clears throat> background fabric for it, but it was really light. So I ended up dyeing it. And then I've been working on this project. I have one sheep at the end down here to do yet. And I have the stars to do. I've got to get the sheep's details done yet. And then I'll stitch that. And I've got a frame and a spot for this in my sewing room already. So I need to get back to that. Because I, I initially started working on that and was really busy with that. And then <clears throat> I got a little distracted because this was calling to me. So I just started stitching. <clears throat> the other parts of it and and I left off the angel's body and just went on and started stitching something else. But Kelly ended up coming home and the color that I was supposed to use was fawn. Um, it's a Weeks Dye Works thread and you can see it right here. You can see how it would not show up on the fabric. And so I put that aside and <clears throat> Kelly ended up coming up with this color. And initially when she showed me this, this is uh, DMC 945. I thought, oh, gross, Kelly. I hate that color. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that made it a little bit easier to pick a color was I bought myself uh, DMC, the whole big thread card. Yeah, the huge one like this. I was going to buy one previously, but when I went online to look at, or when I went um, to buy one uh, from a shop, they were like $25. I think I was going to get one from Fat Quarter Shop. I ended up finding mine on Amazon for $10. And so um, I'll put a link for that below. Uh, it, it was really helpful because we could kind of look at the colors and it was quicker to go through my DMC floss because we could compare a number from there and then I, we could go pull the thread that we thought something might work. And so I ended up with um, DMC 945. And this is also a stitch and I think you can see that little angel pretty good now. And this is how far I am. I, if I finish this section right here of the um, border that's going to come or the band that's going to come across here like this, if I get that band to here, then I will be done with page one. Yahoo! Of course, it's not going to be done in time for Christmas and that's okay. I think I'm just going to probably um, gradually stitch on it because I am liking it and I think it's so pretty. Um, I do love uh, Teresa Kogut's designs. I think she does a wonderful job. Um, they're so pretty. And so I think I'm just going to finish and keep working across the top here first before I get to my big house. I'm so excited to stitch that house. I love red houses. Um, I know many of you do too, but um, I'm excited to get to that house. But first, I'm going to make myself finish across here. I haven't really done anything that has a lot of motifs in it, kind of like this. And so I'm really enjoying uh, finishing, like one night I'll do the flower pot and one night I'll do the raccoon. And it's kind of nice to have little short-term goals inside a big project. And so I'm really just super enjoying um, stitching on that with the lots of uh, little motifs. But <clears throat> I did get sidetracked because my daughter asked me, she said, hey mom, what do you want for Christmas? Well, we redid some things when I redid the sewing room. I got a new TV for the living room and that TV got mounted on the wall and I just love it on the wall. I have been wanting that for a couple of years and finally my son came and did that for me and I am just very, very excited about it. And um, anyway, that left me um, room on top of my entertainment center to um, maybe put some decor. So in my mind, I thought, oh, I'm going to get a dough bowl. I really, really want a dough bowl. And then I thought, I don't have any little cross stitch to put in it. So I kind of dug around to see what I had and I had um, this pattern. And that is heart and hand and it is needle and thread. And the verse on there says, my soul is fed with needle and thread. And I really like that. And so I picked that up and 
all a couple nights and I had that stitched. And that was really fun, simple, quick, and easy to do. I forgot how much I love um, little projects because before I used to only do little projects and I was afraid to do samplers. And then um, with COVID this year, I started kind of doing bigger projects. And then now, then while doing the big projects, I forgot how much I like little projects. One good thing that happened during this is um, <clears throat> I've kind of been a bit of a purist if the person who designed it thought I should use whatever kind of thread. I really tried to work hard to just find and use that kind of thread. Well, with this project, I looked at it and for the red, I believe you're supposed to use uh, barn door and that kind of fades. It's kind of a faded red. Well, I wanted a brighter red. So I switched it out to cherry cobbler and I'm much happier with it this way. And I didn't the yellow that was supposed to be up here kind of blended too much. I didn't like it. I went into my DMC thread and just picked a yellow. I have never done that before, which is really weird because I'm a quilter first and I'm a cross stitcher second. And with quilting designs, I take people's patterns and I change the color all of the time. But for some reason, I didn't think I should do that with, um, or I didn't think I'd be very good at it when I used and did it with... Uh, fabric with linen and floss. And uh, this project was really good for me because I kind of just pulled what I had because I thought, oh, you're only going to use a little bit. What difference does it make? And so I did do that. I picked a different yellow for the um, yellow flowers. I just pulled a DMC that I had and I ended up really liking it. And um, I stitched this on a piece of Lakeside Vintage Exampler. And this is this was my first experience using anything with Lakeside, and I'm really happy with Lakeside linen too. And I think I could stitch something on Lakeside just as easy as how much I love um, vintage country mocha. So I was excited about that. I'm excited that I got enough room to probably do a little another small down here on it. And um, I'll finish this up. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna how I'm gonna finish it, but I know I do want it for the dough bowl that I was thinking about. So after this was so fun and it's so successful. I thought that I would um, stitch this one, the Let's Stay Home and Stitch, the quarantine project. Um, I was really excited about this because I thought mm, this would take up quite a bit of room in my dough bowl, you know, because it's kind of longer and bigger. And I wanted some things that I could keep out all of the time versus just seasonal stuff. I don't mind throwing a few seasonal things in, but I, being um, the dough bowl thing is new to me, I don't want to have to stitch six projects for Christmas, six projects for Valentine's Day, six projects for Easter, six projects for everything. So I thought, well, why don't I just try to stitch some that can be out all of the time? And then maybe as the seasons come along, I could stitch one or two to go in there for this first year. And so that was my plan. <clears throat> and I was really excited about it. I was super excited to have another small project to do. And so I had some 36 count vintage country mocha and I picked it up and I started stitching. And here's how far I got. And let me just tell you, I am not loving it. If you look here, you can see her dress and you can see the blue I'm using. Um, I'm using the called for blue, which is, um, let me think, Chesapeake Bay. Chesapeake Bay is the called for. And I don't, it's, it's much lighter here than it is here. And um, so that was frustrating me a little bit. So I am going to rip it out and I'm, well, I think I'm just gonna start over rather than rip it out, but I'm going to use good old DMC 930. Doesn't that look a lot closer to that color than this looks? 930. That's what I think. So I want to stitch something that I'm gonna love and so I am just going to stitch it in colors that I end up picking out. And what a revolutionary idea. I am so excited. I finally figured that out. Just change the color. Like I said, I do that for quilts all the time. I don't know why I was so hesitant to do it for cross stitch. But from now on, I am not going to fret. If I have whatever linen I have, I'm just going to find a color that goes with it. It is really no big deal. 930. I'm so excited. 
but I didn't get a lot done on that either. Um, I, I've had plenty of time to go back and rip it out. But for my sewing stuff, I have been working on um, trying to finish projects because uh, for quilting, um, there's a lot of UFOs. And so I have tons of UFOs. They're just like unfinished projects. There was a challenge to do a Dirty Dozen uh, challenge and you number your projects one through 12. And then each month somebody picks the number and um, you do whatever number was picked for that month. And so for the month of December, I believe it's number four was picked. And so I had this pin cushion that needed to be finished. I know it's not a quilt project, but I put a few um, pin cushions and other projects in there too. Um, so this is wool applique. I had all of the wool stitched down and I just needed to do the stitching. I ended up doing a chain stitch, an embroidery chain stitch, and then I finished that. And I'm so excited because this could go in my dough bowl. That's what kind of got me going to really want to get that finished. So this took up some of my evening time. And um, I had all the pieces cut out for this. This is going to be a pin cushion too, but I haven't got um, a pin cushion done. Oh, I wanted to say I, for the first time ever, used sawdust to fill something. And I have used pellets. I have used rice. I have used stuffing. I have used... Um, Oh, the animal tri ch chips or whatever those are. Why can't I think of the, what that walnut walnut shells or whatever? I've used that, but by far I like sawdust. I really, really do. They don't get as puffy, but it's easier to get them firm, and I really like the firmness, and I like that it's lighter weight. So I will be using sawdust for a lot of the things that I do. And my son produces plenty of sawdust that he tracks into the house so I can um, use sawdust. It, it won't be a problem. So I already have one of these made. And so this will be a gift, but it'll be a big, a big long pin cushion as well. Or maybe, maybe I'll keep this and this could be one of the pieces that goes in my dough bowl. And I'll keep the other one that I use for a pin cushion up here. That's not a bad idea. So anyway, I need to finish this one, but I did use up some of my cross stitching time to do the stitching of stitch the stars down and I stitched the um, red stripes down, but that's something I'll be finishing in the future. Well, anyway, that, then I had the revolution. Remember I had the revolutionary idea that you could change colors. <laughs> well, I went back to thinking about this project again and remember how I said, the white flowers are along here and they weren't showing up on my fabric. But this is the fabric that I really loved. Um, this is, um, picture this plus legacy. I really love this pr fabric for this project. So I finally just thought to myself, well, if you can change to 930 on this for this project, I know this is really revolutionary, but I could change the color of the flowers for this project. Yes, because I do like this and I want to use this linen. It's not that I'm trying to save this little simple small start. I really liked the green tone to Legacy for this project. And sorry, I didn't iron that. Um, and so I am going to go back to this project. And right now the flowers are white and they have a red um, center to them or a pink center to them. I'm going to change the flowers so that they're pink and give them a white center. And I think that the whiter center, the lighter colored center will really show up. And so I'm excited to go back to this when I do another project. But first I'm gonna continue working on Heaven and Nature because I really wanna keep working on that. But of course, I'm like any other of you. Um, I My eyes are bigger than my stomach or however that works. Um, it works the same way with cross stitch. I see so many beautiful things I want to do when I'm tempted to try so many things. And all of you are such terrible influences on me. And I mean that jokingly. You're all good influences on me because I want to, uh, you know, have a birthday start, have a Christmas start, have a New Year's start. The only problem for me is birthday, Christmas, and New Year's for me is all like two weeks apart. So I don't want to start that many new things. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about what I'm thinking about doing I have different plans for the new year and lots of things going on, but I do want to finish my um, Heaven and Nature project. I know that for sure, um, but 
I kind of got excited about having a birthday start because so many of you have talked about having a birthday start. Previous to all of this, I was like, I am not going to have more than one project going. I have, um, you remember that list I told you of UFO projects I have for quilting? I had 32 on that list. That is way too many projects. Um, I don't feel good about having that many projects like sitting and are finished. And so I really want to rein in and have um, fewer projects. So I don't want to start too many cross-stitching projects. But after stopping and doing this little project in the middle of things I was working on, I realized that it is kind of nice to have at least a couple projects going because, you know, sometimes you're in the mood that you, you know you're not going to have much time. So you can sit down and just stitch this little side right here and you can accomplish something rather than sitting down with the sampler, figuring out where you were at. Um, so there's, um, it just takes up more time. So there's some advantages to having more than one project going just because, you know, your mood or life kind of is, um, just draws you to one thing or another. But I don't want to end up with like 20 cross-stitch um, cross projects that I don't have done. So I'm trying to figure out some kind of happy medium. So I thought, you know, you can have a birthday start. That's not a terrible thing. Um, so let me think. Back in October, I think, uh, my two oldest daughters and I, we went to um, Spring Green and we went to the Country Sampler. And that was just a really fun time. And I have a blog post about that that I'll link in here. And you can see the tour that we did of um, Country Sampler and Spring Green. Um, it is such a beautiful shop and everybody was so kind and nice to us while we were there. Well, when we went, one of my goals was to try to find a project that was a smaller project that was done in silks because I wanted to try silks because I've heard so many people talking about working with silk and how smooth silk is. And that would be, I just thought, oh, well, okay. If I got a small project, this would be a good thing for me to do. And I could do silks. One of my goals was to get a smaller project that used silks and that I could take the silks and give silk a try. And I was super excited about that. But when we went to Spring Green, I didn't see anything that really caught my eye that it was a smaller project that I thought was kind of like a quicker stitch that I could do. Well, I was watching Liz Matthews from Hello from Liz Matthews. And one of her new releases was a Pleasant Sampler. And I was kind of excited because she said that she only needed five silks for it. And I thought, well, this is a great project for me to try because I could try <clears throat> silks and I would only have to buy five. I could see if I liked them or not. And this would be a pretty good project. And um, I especially was excited because I love this verse. It says, how pleasant it is at the end of the day, no follies to have to repent, but reflect on the past and be able to say, my time has been properly spent. So I real, was really excited about that because I love that saying, um, I tell my kids all the time, when I was in first grade, I I had a very good report card. Back then, you got S's, S pluses, and S minuses. And I had S pluses in most things and S's in a few things. But in the comment, my teacher wrote that I don't use my time wisely. <laughs> and that was way back from first grade. And my mom and dad would always tease me about that as I was growing up. And so as an adult, I've worked super, super hard to use my time wisely. If you ask my kids, um, they will laugh and tell you that I never, ever sit down. In fact, um, probably my, me sitting down and writing blog posts for my blog, and my blog is joescountryjunction.com, or sitting down to sew is probably about the only sitting I do during a day, except for right now I am sitting too. But I'm just a busy person, very active, and I like to be up and doing things, and I love accomplishing things. So I thought this verse was perfect for me. And being that it only needed five flosses, I was, um, or five silks, I was super excited about that. So I was able to, um, it took me quite a while. I could not find the Tanager Green, and I finally found it. It's a Gloriana silk. Um, I went, called the Attic, and the Attic had it, and I was excited that they did. And so I, um, can you believe I called? They only had, they had that floss, and that's the only thing I bought. Now that is doing really good. So anyway, this is going to be my birthday start and my birthday is coming up right here soon. And so I'm going to be starting that. And I did buy the, 
called for linen and that is 36 doubloon. And so that's the linen and my flosses are in here. So I'm pretty excited about that. And it's going to be my first experience with silk. And after I got the pattern, I had no idea. Um, I was reading through it and um, let me think. Here, <clears throat> it says the third full alphabet and the sixth horizontal band are worked with four-sided stitch. And the fourth is worked with rice stitch. And the ninth is with Algerian eyelet stitch. So this is going to be my um, learning project. So I'm going to learn these new stitches. I think there's three new stitches I'm going to learn. And I am going to um, experience silk. So I am just super excited about that because being, um, I was a cross stitcher back when my kids were little, back in the late 80s, early 90s. And then I kind of moved towards quilting. And now I'm still quilting, but I'm moving a little bit back towards cross stitch. And I was super, super excited because um, I am learning so much and um, I'll be excited to start this for my birthday start. And I have a new year start too. Um, I am caving to the pressure put on by Olivia from Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. And I am starting the anniversaries of the heart. And so I don't know if you guys um, are like me, but I sometimes buy myself my own Christmas present. Yeah, because then I know I'll get what I want. Um, so anyway, I have all the charts for Anniversaries of the Heart. It took me a while. Um, I was really stuck and I could not get the, which one was it that I couldn't get? I couldn't get the Pumpkin Farm. I could not find that and could not find that. And so I ended up having to order from three different places in order to um, get the charts. But I got them. And I have made myself really not look at them very much because I do want it to be my Christmas present, but I want it to be my New Year's start. So I didn't wrap it up, but I have just left it sit there and I have not like looked at the charts. I haven't studied the charts. I haven't like looked at the motifs to see what I like. I haven't um, done too much of that. I did do enough to um, get enough floss for the first um, two months. I looked that far ahead to do that. And right now I'm kind of doing this big debate because I saw online a conversion because the house for January or the block for January is really quite white. And I saw a conversion to do it a little bit more blue. And so right now I'm trying to decide which way I wanna do it, but I'm trying not to look at it very much because I do want it to be kind of special for Christmas for myself. And so Christmas day, I am going to be checking this out and I will not be having a Christmas start. I don't think I'll start it at Christmas. I think I'll wait and start at the new year. We'll just see. We'll see how Christmas works and if the kids are around or if I can find time to do it or not. I might start it at Christmas, but it's gonna be my start for 2021. And I am not going to beat myself up and try to make sure I have one done every month. Of course, I would love that to be my goal, but I don't want my stitching to become a chore. So I am politely giving myself two years to finish it rather than one year. And if I feel like stitching it, I'm going to stitch it and I'm going to try to make a goal that that's going to be the first thing I stitch every month. But if, if it comes along that, I don't feel like stitching that day. I feel like stitching something else. I'm just going to let myself. Um, life's too short to make too many rules. And so I don't want to make too many rules, but I am super, super excited to be starting Anniversaries of the Heart. Um, Olivia from Pumpkin Hollow Quilts, I think, has inspired so, so many of us to want to start that because um, there's little fun things and simple things to stitch like this. And then there's memory pieces, and I want to stitch a memory piece. And I think the Anniversaries of the Heart will be an awesome memory piece for me to stitch. But that's kind of my plans and that's what I'm up to. And um, that's what I'm looking forward to for 2021 and for the rest of this year. Um, I have been so super thankful for Cross Stitch this last year. Um, it has distracted me from some of the craziness of the world. Um, 
it has found me to uh, take a little more time to sit down and kind of relax more. And that's something I think I really needed this year more than ever. And I don't know. I'm just really excited. Um, a lot of people are kind of, oh, I got to tickle my throat. Sorry. A lot of people have been kind of like cussing 2020. And in a way, I mean, I feel super sad about all the people who have passed away, all the people who have been stressed about all the things there are. But for me personally, I think it's really helped me find a way to kind of calm down and prioritize and see what's really important. So with that, I'm going to close and I'll see you in 2021. Bye.